In mechanical ventilation, volume time waveforms are used to visualize the delivery of tidal volume over time. The shape of this waveform can vary based on the ventilator's settings and the mode of ventilation. Two common shapes are the sinusoidal waveform and the ascending ramp waveform. A sinusoidal volume time waveform resembles the shape of a sine wave. It gradually increases and decreases in a smooth, wave-like pattern. The sinusoidal pattern indicates a gradual and continuous change in volume, with no abrupt transitions, suggesting a more even distribution of air during the breathing cycle. This waveform is typically associated with spontaneous breathing or certain modes of ventilation that allow for a more natural flow of air. Closely mimicking physiological breathing. An ascending ramp waveform, on the other hand, is characterized by a straight or slightly curved line that increases at a constant rate over time. This pattern represents a gradual increase in volume delivery, which is typically seen in controlled mechanical ventilation modes. The ascending ramp suggests that the ventilator is delivering volume at a steady, continuous rate until the target tidal volume is reached. This gives the wave form the typical mountain peak appearance. It may also have a plateau or flattened area at the peak of the waveform. During the flat or plateau phase, the volume remains constant, indicating that the lungs have received the full breath and no more air is being added. This happens at the end of the inspiratory phase, often during an inspiratory pause maneuver. Now, let's study why the volume time wave form takes a shape of a mountain. During the inspiration phase, the ventilator delivers air into the lungs which causes the volume to increase. In volume-controlled ventilation, this increase typically appears as a linear rise on the waveform since the ventilator is programmed to deliver a specific volume of air over a set period. The slope of this rise can vary depending on the flow rate settings, a higher flow rate results in a steeper rise. In pressure-controlled modes however, the rise in volume may take on a more curved or exponential shape with fluctuating tidal volume depending on the lung compliance and the pressure applied by the ventilator. The volume attained at the end of inspiration is the tidal volume. If there is a pause at the end of inspiration, known as an inspiratory hold, the waveform will display a plateau. This plateau indicates that the volume of air in the lungs is being held constant. This phase is useful for assessing plateau pressure, which provides insights into the lung compliance. When the ventilator ceases to deliver air, the patient begins to exhale, starting the expiration phase. During this phase, the volume of air in the lungs decreases as it is expelled, and this is reflected on the waveform as a downward slope. The steepness of this slope is influenced by the patient's lung compliance and airway resistance. In individuals with healthy lungs, the volume typically decreases smoothly and rapidly. In contrast, if there is increased airway resistance or poor lung compliance, the slope may be less steep, indicating slower exhalation. Finally, the volume returns to the baseline. In mechanical ventilation, the control variable in a volume time waveform can be recognized by observing the consistency and predictability of the waveform. If the waveform remains smooth and steady during inspiration, followed by a return to baseline during exhalation, it indicates that volume is the controlled variable. This is because, in volume controlled ventilation, the ventilator maintains a constant volume leading to a uniform waveform. Additionally, while the volume time waveform remains consistent, the pressure time waveform may vary depending on the patient's lung compliance and airway resistance. 
In contrast, in pressure-controlled ventilation, the volume time waveform may change with varying lung conditions, but the pressure time waveform remains consistent, indicating that pressure is the controlled variable. An air leak in a volume time waveform can be recognized by an abnormality in the expected pattern of the waveform. Typically, in the absence of a leak, the volume time waveform rises smoothly during inspiration, reaches a peak and then returns to baseline during exhalation. However, when there is an air leak, the waveform will not return fully to baseline at the end of exhalation. Instead, it plateaus above zero indicating that the expected volume of air is not returning to the ventilator. Additionally, the upward slope during inspiration may be less steep or show a slower rise as the ventilator compensates for the air loss. The peak volume may be lower than expected because some of the air intended for the patient is escaping through the leak. Air trapping occurs when a person cannot fully exhale the air from their lungs before the next breath begins. This situation is common in conditions like COPD or asthma, where airway obstruction slows down exhalation. On a volume time curve, this incomplete exhalation causes the curve to not return to baseline before the next breath starts. The curve will often show a prolonged, flattened exhalation phase, indicating that air is still trapped in the lungs. Now, if you remember the volume time waveform of air leak, it also causes the curve to not return to baseline. In an air leak, the curve fails to return to baseline because air is escaping from the system, leading to a loss of volume. This can cause a rapid decline or sudden drop-off in the curve depending on the severity of the leak. In air trapping, the problem is incomplete exhalation leading to residual air in the lungs. The curve flattens out as it approaches baseline but doesn't reach it because exhalation is cut short. So, while both conditions result in a similar looking waveform, the underlying causes are different. Air trapping is due to incomplete exhalation, whereas an air leak is due to loss of air from the system. The subtle differences in how the curve behaves can help differentiate between the two. Active exhalation in mechanical ventilation occurs when a patient uses their respiratory muscles to forcefully expel air, rather than relying on the passive recoil of the lungs, for example with air trapping, patient discomfort or asynchrony. This effort results in noticeable changes on the volume time curve. Specifically, the exhalation volume may exceed the inhalation volume, as the patient expels more air than the ventilator delivered. The curve might also display a steeper or more abrupt slope during exhalation and can drop below the baseline, indicating a negative volume shift. Furthermore, volume time waveform can be used to detect patient ventilator asynchrony in conjunction with flow and pressure time waveform. We will discuss asynchrony in a separate video.